Let's do this. We're gonna get on down now. State versus Brooks might have the appearances, please. Thank you. And sir, for your appearance this morning. for my client. I set for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments and make a, a reservation of all of my constitutional rights, mostly the first, the sixth, and the fourteenth amendments. Thank you. The record to reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in custody in person. He is wearing his jail attire this morning. Um, I do want to make a record that at 8.46 p.m. yesterday, I did swear in two additional sheriff's deputies who would be working with our jurors through the overnight or third shift hours. Um, I did uh, administer the same oath that was administered to all the other bailiffs um, yesterday evening. Then, of course, we are uh, open and the jurors are here and they will be instructed to uh, start their deliberations. The only other thing I would put on the record is I have received information regarding the Reddit post uh, that there was a subsequent post from that website uh, indicating that it was a prank. Um, and so I know I don't know to what extent the Sheriff's Department uh, is looking into that as well, but it's my understanding. Um, based on news reports that uh, that entire post or site was taken down. Not the site of Reddit, but it's no longer, I believe, viewable. But there was that additional information uh, regarding that, at least from the administrator, I believe, of that post. So I just wanted to put that on the record. And uh, if and when, or I should say when, uh, the investigation is completed, uh, I will assure the parties that you will be provided with that information. So, so go ahead. So it's being called a prank? Per the Reddit post itself, yes. So we so we don't have any idea if that's a, a fact though, right? You're correct. <clears throat> I'm just putting on the record the additional information that's been reported on. Um, and then again, once the Sheriff's Department concludes their investigation, uh, it will be turned over to the parties. So at this point, um, until there's a question or a verdict, um, courtroom will remain open. I'm going to be working in my office on other things uh, and will be available, of course, if there are any questions or if a verdict is reached. Right, so ahead. notify the parties. Judge. Yes. Oh, go ahead. No. <coughs> go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm still very concerned about this whole uh, Reddit thing after having the chance to fully read it and um, look at some of the language that's in it. Um, 
it, it's, it's very concerning. That's uh, why there's an investigation, sir. It's anytime there's an allegation that the integrity of this judicial process has been compromised, especially with a juror, I take that incredibly seriously, which is why I turned it over to the sheriff's department. I would uh, like your honor to, if it pleases the, uh, the court, and if it pleases your honor, I would like to look at some alternatives if if I may bring up the uh in, in, in regards to the language. I, I also want to state that uh for the record uh this did not come about from the prosecution side, from the defensive side, and certainly not from your honor side. Um, this is something that just pretty much sprang up. Um a lot of my concern though, just not from just the language and the actual post, but <clears throat> Um, I was kind of concerned that uh, I was the last one to learn of this information that had been known. Uh, I wasn't aware of it until after 6.30 last night um, or around that time because I, I don't want to misquote the record, but somewhere around that time. It was shortly after 7.00. Oh, so it was after, I didn't know, I I thought it was, I knew it was after 6.30, but I didn't want to incorrect, incorrectly state um, the record. Your I can Honor, address that for you right now if you would like. Yeah, I, 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 um, if it pleases you, it pleases your honor, I would like to uh, request some alternatives to, to, to this uh, issue. Um, What's your specific request? My specific request would be to uh, look into a mistrial and also any alternatives along those lines, short of that or along those lines, or a mistrial. Um, I was looking at some, obviously, yesterday was very, very long for, for, for everybody. And as you know, because of my status uh, here in the, the jail, I'm allowed to have a uh, law library time up until a certain point of the evening and then I have to shut it down <clears throat> per jail policy. So I was I was able to find a few different things that I wanted to bring to uh, your honor's attention if I may. Go ahead. Um, one being uh, uh, United States versus Perez, uh, 22 U.S. Five seven nine, and that specifically, I think it's referenced because that one is pretty old in itself. But it's referenced in a lot of the other uh, case laws that I actually found. I think, and I could be if I'm interpreting this incorrectly. I apologize. Um, they kind of use that as kind of like the benchmark uh, for what they refer to as uh, manifest necessity. That's kind of like one of the leading cases that each one references uh, in regards to issues similar to two things like this when it when it comes into play. Um, and it specifically uh, points to uh, trial judge's discretion. And uh, I think that's kind of like the leading one. Also, I looked at uh, Brown versus Rushton, Rush, Rushton, uh, five, seven, two, F.3D uh, 198, which speaks to uh, the language, is basically it speaks to the same thing. It speaks about uh, manifest necessity, uh, it, it uh, speaks about um, uh, if there's an issue of uh, exculpatory evidence, things of that nature. Um, also, uh, United States versus Bates. Um, that's B A T E S uh, nine one seven F two D three eight eight, and that speaks of uh, potential for an impartial verdict. Specifically, it says it, uh, along the lines of an uh, impartial verdict, if an impartial verdict can be reached, or if a verdict of conviction could be reached but would have to be reversed on appeal due to an obvious procedural error in the trial. Uh, that's one of the main issues that that, that speaks to. 
Um, I also looked at uh, Arizona versus Washington, uh, 434 US 497. And that speaks to what I was stating before. Um, it says that neither party in a case has a right to have his case decided by a jury, which may be tainted by bias. And I, and I say that because it certainly wasn't uh, any anything dealing with the prosecution. They had nothing to do with this. The defense had nothing to do with this. And certainly you, Your Honor, had nothing to do with this. But just for the concern factor, uh, the language uh, it's pretty clear that, that this if not directly came from a juror who sits on this panel it came from someone who sits in this courtroom every single day the language it, it directed towards you your honor directed towards uh, having clear bias towards the defense some of the things that they quoted of having knowledge of is is extremely concerning extremely concerning and then going back to some of these um, case laws that i cited it talks about um something to the effect of uh you know the the ends of public justice um but i think that is leaning more so towards the judge's discretion i would say at least from how i was interpreting interpreting it obviously i'm not educated in a lot of the laws in itself but how I was interpreting it um, <clears throat> this is definitely definitely a concerning issue is definitely something that I would request your honor to take a a, a, a long look at um, look at some options look at some alternative alternatives then those those case laws I cited talks specifically about that um, options that um, you, Your Honor, can can look at and, and and use your discretion to see if it's appropriate in any in any way. But um, I'm extremely concerned about this. Um, if, if if anything, for cautionary reasons, um, I believe, Your Honor, that you definitely should um, take a look at everything I'm I'm, I'm saying here and uh, these case laws and. And, uh, What's the request, though, that you're making based upon the case law that you cite? I heard in there mistrial, but I want to make sure I understand the, your request for relief and what it is. You say request for? Relief. Relief? And what are you um, asking me to do based upon the information that we, the limited information we have about the Reddit post in this trial? Um, I guess my request would be, because of the concern of this, to look at uh, a mistrial or at the very least a, a, a discharge of, a, of the jury at this time. So this can be resolved. This is this is this is alarming, to say the least. Um, this post and, and I, I don't know where Reddit is. To be honest, I've, I've never heard of it or used it, so I, I don't know the extent of. It's almost like this could be like a snowball type of thing. It can it can start with something that that's this small, and then it can snowball out of control into something totally different. I don't know the extent of this website. Um, I don't know who. Well, I think the name of the person who sent the uh, to to who alerted the clerk, of course, to. Uh, to this post, I think his name is in is 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 in the um, the email. But then that even asks the qu begs the question of how did this person come across this site? What are what, what what is their significance to this? What is their role in this? It's it's just so many questions, and and I mean clearly this this points at the court's integrity. It points at your integrity, Your Honor. It, it's 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 alarming. It's very alarming. And if there's a chance that there can be hidden bias in this jury, it needs to be addressed now rather than later. This is very concerning. Well, thank you for bringing up your concerns. Let me turn to the state if they want to respond and then see what other issues they want to cover this morning. Judge, the original post was on a sub 
Reddit thread called Justice for Daryl. Um, that's the copy that the defendant has in front of him. That post was edited last night, uh, claiming that it was a prank from the start and that the original poster is uh, didn't think it would get that far out of hand. The way that Reddit works, the only person who can mod, uh, excuse me, modify the content of the original post is the original poster, and because the jurors have um, no access to any electronic devices, I think it's safe to say that our 12 jurors back there are not one of the, are not the original poster. So I think that that puts that issue pretty much to bed. It's still obviously under investigation because the court takes it so seriously, but. Um, there really is no um, actionable or any real reason why um, we should doubt the jury's um, being unbiased in this case. I object to that on the grounds, Your Honor, that, like you just stated, it, it's an investigation going on. And if there's an investi investigation, <coughs> then that clearly says that something is amiss. Um, we have 16, well, 15. We have 15 jurors. Uh, we, there's still too many questions that we don't know. Too many. Um, I don't think anything's put to bed because we don't know. It, it's, it's, it's unfair to say that the issue was put to bed when there's still so many questions left out there. I'm, I'm sure you reviewed it yourself, Your Honor. You, you see the language in this, whatever it is, Thread. I don't know. I don't know what this is. It's clearly a post from somebody who has intimate knowledge of of the trial and and, and, and what's going on in the trial. I, I don't think. I mean, common sense would would tell you that this is someone who's very close to the case. Whether whether they were intending to be funny, whether they were intending to try to uh, prank the court or anything like that. We don't know. That could be anybody's guess. The language in this, the way that, that the way that it's formatted, they lay out four specific points of what, what they think. They uh, they point to certain language in, in the case. Uh, they make references to saying when we were in the room, they got certain feelings from when deep where they specifically refer to themselves and a group. That would be we, plural. Um, they... They say, and I have to admit, I am biased against the defendant for the horrible acts he did. And and they attack you, Your Honor. They, they clearly attack you. This this is this is if this is I is someone's idea of fun, is is anybody's guess, but I don't believe that it is clearly by the way it's formatted and by the language that, that is in it. This is clearly someone with intimate knowledge of the case and what's going on clearly there's no other way there's no other way to interpret this you can tell by just by the, the, what they're laying out in the language that they're speaking with that this is clearly someone co close to the case and, and because of that it still has to be um, I'm informed in the investigation but there's still too many questions left in the air just from this how, how can we say anything's put to bed when there's still a, a, an investigation for all we know, what if what if this turns up that it was someone on the jury, or what what if it turns out that more people are involved in it than just whoever this anonymous uh, person was who left the post? It's too many questions, and it's too concerning. What if something like this springs up again at the last minute? We've we've been going through the trial now for basically three weeks, the better part of three weeks. And even even in uh, court dates leading up to the trial, we've never had anything like this happen. Nothing like this has been brought to your attention. Nothing like this has been been brought before the court's attention. It's, this just came out of the blue and now all of a sudden it's, it's being labeled a prank. Is that because they were found out? I mean, it, 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 beg, it begs so many questions. It's, it's, it's too uncertain, it's, it's too concerning, and it's, <laughs> It's too alarming. It's too alarming to just overlook and say, "Oh, well, we'll just we'll just set it to the side and let them." No, this this there has to be some type of alternatives and some type something has to be done. 
something. And if that's a mistrial, if that's uh, 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 discharging a jury, if that's some other type of alternatives that can be looked at, I'm, I'm sure that uh, these case law speaks to other options that could come into play. They deserve to at least be looked at. If, if anything, to protect the integrity of the trial. I, I find it very hard to believe that this close uh, to the trial being over and now all of a sudden these issues are being raised. So this is obviously not a prank and it's obvious that this is someone with intimate knowledge. It's, it's, very, it's very clear to me. Well, let me address your concern, sir. I cannot make conclusions at this point about whether this is legitimate or a prank. What I know is as follows. I received the information about the subreddit post at approximately 9.30, 9.40 yesterday morning. I and I alone made the decision to withhold advising the parties because of where we were at in the trial, because there was nothing in that post, it was an anonymous post, that would lend credibility to that it was in fact one of these jurors. But out of an abundance of caution, I referred it to law enforcement because it is very serious if the integrity of these proceedings were to be put at issue by a juror. I'd remind you though, every single day these jurors were read uh, the bulk of jury instruction 50. They all took an oath and I have no reason to doubt that they would violate that oath at this time. So I took and I made the decision to withhold telling the parties because we were in the middle of instructing the jury. I was in the middle of instructing the jury. And I wasn't going to delay the proceedings because it was so speculative at that point and remains speculative at this point. As you know, the case went to the jury. I brought this up. I waited about a half an hour once the case went to the jury. Uh, frankly, we had had a long day. I wanted to get a bit to eat, and then I wanted to come back out and make a record of what I had. Once again, the forensic unit with the Sheriff's Department has taken lead of this investigation. I'm not a part of that investigation. Law enforcement will handle it. From my perspective, um, not only did the Clerk of Courts Office receive uh, emails regarding this, it sounds like the District Attorney received emails. Um, I may have even gotten one, I don't remember the time, it was later regarding the post. Frankly, people figure out my email all the time. It was not solicited by me in any way and I did not respond to it and I simply forwarded that email on to law enforcement. So it's pretty clear to me that a lot of people have access to Reddit. I personally am not a user of Reddit, so I don't know the ins and outs of it other than it is a social media site uh, where people can create accounts uh, and post and there can be like chat rooms for example or just various as this is called subreddits um, and at this point you've requested a mistrial um, you've requested that I discharge the jury I'm declining to do that at this time sir again I need to make decisions based upon the record that's before me and right now the record is speculative there are no facts to support a mistrial or discharging the jury. I trust the parties will continue in their own independent investigations, uh, that you will continue reviewing case law, make whatever requests that you deem appropriate. I certainly will take time uh, to look at the cases you have cited um, to see if there's anything uh, based upon the requests that you have made that I would need to further <coughs> review. Uh, but at this time, I do not see grounds for a mistrial. I do not see grounds to discharge the jury. That is how I will address it at this point. Um, I know the state, I believe, wanted to address something else. I'm not sure if that was it, but uh, you had deferred to Mr. Brooks, so go ahead. Are there, is there anything you want me to address or at least bring to the court's attention at uh, this time? Just a minor point, Your Honor. You had noted the defendant is in his orange jail uniform today. It's my understanding the jail did offer him the ability to put on his street clothes and he declined, so I just wanted that on the record. Um, there may be occasions where this jury has to be brought into the courtroom for one reason or another, and he should be in civilian clothes um, if that occurs, if he chooses to. 
It's a good point to bring up. It is possible the jury would need to be brought out uh, if there is any question that I need to answer on the record. Um, if for some reason the technology were not to be working appropriately when uh, videos or other evidence are displayed to them. And so it is possible that the jury would need to come out. Of course, they'll come out if and when a verdict is reached. Um, so I would certainly give you the opportunity, sir, if you want to change into the street clothes that uh, I would certainly direct the sheriff's department to make that available for you isn't, isn't should that, you choose. Isn't it my choice? Yes, it is. So why, just, do I, why do I need to be in street clothes? Why does that need to be on the record? That your choice if, should be placed on the record. So if or why. if not, I was offered to be in street clothes if I made it the choice. Do you dispute that, sir? Yes, I dispute it because it's my choice. Well, no, at this do you point, dispute that you were given this point, the choice no, this morning? At this point, there's no reason why that should be on the record that if or if I was not offered street clothes, what, what, rele what relevancy does that have to... It could have potential relevancy later on if why? you were to challenge that you and claim that you were required to wear your jail uniform or jail attire. You're not required. This I didn't is make a trial. That you have the right to wear street clothes, and I will certainly provide uh, that opportunity should you wish to change at any point in time. Um, but what you're telling me is it's your choice to be in jail attire. I'll respect that choice, yeah. of course. I, so why does that need to be stated for the record? I just why? indicated why, sir. So I, I don't I don't see the relevancy of it. All right. At uh, this point, never, um, unless there are raised. any further issues, I am going to go back into my office. The courtroom will remain open, and we'll let you know uh, when the jury communicates there, with us, either about a question or verdicts. There, there is something that needs to be addressed. Subject matter jurisdiction. The court why declines that. I'm stepping off. Why does it have? Why hasn't it been proven on the record yet? And I record in State versus Brooks appearances are as they were before. I would make just one note that Mr. Brooks is now present in a suit, and I will also advise that at 9:43 a.m. this morning, I was advised that the jury had reached verdicts in this matter, and. Without anything further, I'll have the jury brought out. Your Honor, <clears throat> Your Honor I don't consent to being called that name. I would like to address subject matter jurisdiction for the record as yet to be proved. Your objections are noted. I will not be addressing subject matter jurisdiction. Please bring the jury out. Would it be proven for the record, Your Honor? Just a reminder to everyone that I do expect everyone in the courtroom to demonstrate appropriate decorum and courtesy as the verdicts are read and refrain from audible responses. Any disruptions may result in removal from the courtroom. Your Honor, is that a tacit agreement not to address subject matter jurisdiction for the record? Jury's coming in. All rise, please. I respectfully object to that ruling, Your Honor, and request the legal reconsideration of your ruling for the record. Your requests are noted, sir. We will not be addressing that further. For the record, may I respectfully reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling, Your Honor. Is that a tacit agreement and a judicial determination that you don't have to answer that question as a public servant, Your Honor? For the record, may I request the legal or factual basis for your ruling, Your Honor? It might for, be a false alarm. For the record, may I respectfully request the written judicial finding of fact and conclusion of no, law on this something. issue, Your Honor? All your requests are noted for the record. They all are denied, sir. All rise. Jury's coming in. For the record, may I respectfully move for an interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter, Your Honor? Denied. For the record, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction? Denied. Based on what law or fact, Your Honor? Is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer that question? For the record, Your Honor, as a public servant, you don't have to address <coughs> admiralty law or common law if this court is operating under admiralty law. We will not be addressing any of those issues. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Object, Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you picked one among you to be the four person? Yes. Yeah. All right, and I see it's your number 11. Have you reached verdicts on all 76 counts? Yes. All right, would you please hand all of the forms to the bailiff? Your Honor, seeing is that we've reached a verdict, is it necessary that I have these shock devices on my ankles? And I have confirmed that there are 76 signed verdicts 
and 76 unsigned verdicts. All right, I will read each one into the record. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. Dated this 26th day of October 2022, signed by the foreperson, juror number 11. If you find the defendant guilty of first-degree intentional homicide, answer the following question, yes or no. Did the defendant commit first-degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. Guilty, yes. We're in hell, you piece of shit. Hey, you are to be removed right now. You will not do that. Guilty, yes. 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 Guilty, guilty. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of battery, as charged in count 76 of the information. Dated today's date, he signed by the four person. Mr. Brooks, would you like me to poll the jury? Yes. Members of the jury, I'm going to ask each one of you individually to stand up, identify your number for the record, and then state whether the verdicts read in open court are your true verdicts. <coughs> I'll start with the four person. And I'll read your numbers first, so it's a little bit easier. So juror number 11. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number three. Yes. Thank you. Juror number six. It is. Thank you. Juror number 14. Yes. Thank you. Juror number 19. Yes. Thank you. Juror number 27. Yes. Thank you. Juror number 34. Yes. Thank you. Juror number 41. Yes. Thank you. Juror number 45. Yes. Thank you. Juror number 46. Yes. Thank you. Juror number 48. They are reality. Thank you. Juror number 51. Yes. Thank you. I should state for the record I did have the alternates brought back in. Obviously, they did not deliberate, but it was important to have them because there are certain instructions I give at the end. All right. Mr. Brooks, are you satisfied with the polling of the jurors? No. I'm sorry? No. The court is so satisfied with the polling of the jurors. The court now accepts the verdicts. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of myself, the citizens of Waukesha County, and both parties here, I want to thank you for the time and attention that you've spent on this case. Your service in this case is now concluded. There is no requirement that you maintain secrecy concerning what happened in the jury room, but you do not have to discuss the case with anyone or answer any questions about it. On behalf, again, of the court and all of the parties, we thank you for your service over the last three and a half weeks. You are discharged and free to go. All rise for the jury, please. <coughs>
Thank you. Be seated. Anything from the state at this time? Your Honor, the state moves for judgment on the verdict as to each and every count. Anything from you, Mr. Brooks? Uh, what is judgment? Given the verdicts from the jury here today, uh, the court will enter judgments of conviction based upon the verdicts on all 76 counts. The court will also revoke bond. In this case, I plan on bringing the case in Monday, this coming Monday, the 31st at 1 p.m. to address further scheduling. What I would ask the parties to do between now and then is to determine how long you think each side will need to present their sentencing remarks, uh, whether you anticipate anyone speaking on your behalf, if so, how many, how long, so that I can then look at my calendar and adjust and make sure that I have the appropriate amount of time to do that. I'm not going to sentencing on Monday. It is just for further scheduling at 1 p.m. before my afternoon case. <coughs> Judge, would you be willing to consider uh, persons appearing by Zoom for sentencing? Yes, I would not do anything different than what I've been doing uh, since we started utilizing Zoom, and that is to make it available for both uh, victims and family members of the uh, defendant if they so choose to make statements over Zoom. Okay, thank you. That You're welcome. helps us in our planning. All right. All right, then. Thank you, everyone. We are adjourned for today. We'll see you all on Monday. Tell Carrie to come down here. That's not um, they need to come down by now. So they just gotta wait for some of the family members. Brandon, I thought you said one camera. I know. That's, I'm just already giving you grief, man. <laughs> like your idea of one is. Thanks for busting them out, though, Leland. I sure appreciate that. We can. Scooch. Yeah, make sure Pepper gets the FaceTime, please. Yeah. We're still waiting on about 15 more people. They're upstairs. Right? You're not live, right? All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're here to have a press conference to discuss some of the th events that happened today. Uh, speaking today will be District Attorney Sue Opper, Chief Dan Thompson of the Waukesha Police Department, uh, also, David Sorensen, which is the husband of Virginia, Ginny Sorensen, Tyler Pudliner, he's a Waukesha South Band member, and Amber Conkey, a mother of one of the juvenile victims. Also present with us today is County Executive Paul Farrell, the prosecution team consisting of Leslie Basie, Zach Wichow, Detective Tom Casey from the Waukesha Police Department, Detective Ryan Ruglin from the Waukesha Sheriff's Office, and paralegal Christy Giese. Also to my right, your left, is Jen Dunn and Carrie Peterson from the Waukesha County District Attorney Victim Witness and with our comfort dog, Pepper, who have played an integral role with our crime victims throughout this whole process. To that, Sue Opper. Thank you. First and foremost, our thoughts and concerns remain with the victims involved in this tragedy and their families. Although the defendant devastated our community, the people of the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, and beyond demonstrated tremendous resiliency. We are so grateful for the first responders, citizens, and medical professionals who sprang into action and immediately rendered aid and saved so many lives that day. We appreciate the jury for their work and dedication to justice. We commend the police officers and citizen witnesses who testified or were prepared to testify and asked to relive the events of that horrific day. We are satisfied that this defendant has been held accountable for his actions. He now faces imprisonment of six consecutive life sentences plus 859 years of confinement. There is much healing ahead for the victims and for our community, but we hope today's result is a step further along that path. Remain strong, Waukesha. Thank you. Waukesha Police Chief Dan Thompson. 
Thank you. Two days we'll never forget. November 21 of 2021, on that tragic day, and October 26 of 2022. Why October 26? Because justice was served today. I want to say thank you and praises to this community. I want to say thank you in the, resol the resiliency and strength of the families and victims who were involved in this and were impacted by this event. The investigation team, I want to send a personal thank you to the district attorney's office, Sue Opper, Leslie, Zach, and everyone on that team who assisted in this successful prosecution. I want to say thank you to the jury and the court process and the court proceedings and everyone that was involved in the court who found this defendant guilty, which is just and right. That defendant's actions do not define this great community. It refined us in our resolve and our strength in, in being Waukesha strong. Thank you. Thank you. I'm David Sorensen. These are my two sons. Justice was served for my wife, Virginia Sorensen, my two boys, my three children, and the whole Sorensen clan. Thank you very much to the people that did this court case. We appreciate it. Uh, Sean, our marshal wants to say one little thing. We've been we've been praying for this day for a long time, and this morning my my five year old daughter came up to me and and hand me hand me handed me this necklace with my mom's ashes in it, and she told me to take my mom with us for the sentencing. So she was with us today, and it. I just want to thank everyone for what they did today. And um, one last thing, my mom always used to tell us when we were kids and our family that she always said, angels watch over you guys. So I just want to say angels watch over you guys and turn on those blue lights tonight. Thank you. I want to first thank, thank the prosecution team. Uh, they were the one that got us to this point. Um, I'm thankful for all their support along the way and uh, getting us to this day. It's been a difficult day. Um, I know that this will give us healing. This is another step forward in this process. We've been resilient all the way through. One of the things that I've said so much throughout this is that we're stronger than him, and it's been proven today. Um, it's just another step forward in the process. So I want to thank Sue, um, Zach, Leslie, all those guys for their hard work, Jen and her staff, and especially those first responders that has been brought up. They are the ones that especially kept me here, um, gave us a second chance, and they've kept our community strong. So, yeah, walk us strong. As Marshall said, he touched on it. Keep those blue lights on tonight. Thank you, everybody. just want to say that um, I'm very happy with the, the verdicts and that, you know, justice has been served today. Um, I would just like to thank everybody, the first responders, um, the DA and the, the judge, uh, all the law enforcement Everybody who was involved, especially those who were very much involved with my family and the support system that we have had, um, it, it's, it's been amazing to see how wonderful this community has been to pull together for all of those who were hurt that night. With that, we'll take a few questions. Um, those available for questions will be Chief Thompson and District Attorney Sue Opper. So I'll start right here, TMJ4. Uh, who would you like to direct your question to? Uh, Sue, come on up. Okay, thank you. Chief. We just got to know, how are you and your team feeling right now about this outcome? Well, it's obviously quite satisfying that uh, Mr. Brooks has been found guilty and held accountable for his actions. Um, as many of these uh, victims have said, this is a, a joyous day for that reason. It's also uh, the point where we hope everyone can move on from. Uh, the support that we've gotten as this case wore on day after day uh, was tremendous and um, we're, we're very relieved. I guess that's the best word is relief. Hillary? Um, I saw you get a tear in your eye when they were talking about Virginia's ashes. Um, you spoke about yep. what this meant to you and the victims. What, how do you begin to describe what it was like going up against Brooks as defending him, representing himself. Did that change your strategy? How did you get through all that? Yeah. I mean, legally it changed our strategy certainly because um, 
if there's an appeal, we have to do, he can make a mistake in the courtroom and get a new trial, and um, we have to pay the price for that, we the state and we the victims. So it's changed our strategy in that we had to make sure, and Judge Doro did as well, the record was very thorough, very complete, and we didn't miss anything. Um, but as far as handling the actual court proceedings, we felt very, very offended by his behavior, his disrespect of the court, the decorum, the families, um, his insulting the judge, his challenging the judge. That's not the way our system is designed. That's, that was intentional on his part. We truly believe that. Um, he did everything he can except claim that the dog ate his homework. And um, he tried to turn this into his story. Let's talk about Mr. Brooks and his family. And we just kept redirecting it back to the real focus here is our families, our victims, our community, and his responsibility for this destruction. Thank you. 58. Um, again, it wasn't a difficult case factually, and I don't mean to sound, um, you know, overly confident in that, but this case was unique because the activity was videotaped, right? Um, and so, whereas most cases we have to rely on eyewitness accounts or other ways to prove the case, we had videograph evidence of his behavior all up and down that crime scene and throughout the neighborhood. So that way, um, it wasn't difficult. Again, the difficulty and the challenges we faced was um, what nonsense was going to come out of his mouth next. And uh, we were anticipating much of what would come next and being ready legally with case law and legal authority to be able to respond to that. So I think that was the hardest thing. The investigation was so thorough, so well done, that we knew the facts were solid. It was just uh, making sure the record and the presentation was done legally accurate. We'll do Fox Local. So what went into your decision to perhaps minimize the number of direct witnesses that went up on that stand? And mm -hmm. I wonder, did you expect any of these antics, and if that went into your decision? Yes, it did. Um, so obviously we didn't know until very late that he'd be representing himself. Um, but we as a team set out from day one, and this was months and months ago when he still had attorneys, we vowed we would not put children on the stand. Absolutely. It wasn't necessary. Again, there were plenty of other ways to tell this story without asking a child to testify in a courtroom and relive this very, very extreme tragic situation. So that was a commitment we made as a team months ago, and we stuck by that. Certainly, as we learned his antics, we reevaluated and we and um, we would discuss it every night as a team is who are we going to use tomorrow and and do we really need this person because um, we were so again not personally offended but professionally offended that he would insult the process and and insult the victims, accuse them of financial gain for their testimony, things like that. It was just so. Um, offensive that we we definitely were conscious of that in our decision making and how can we minimize this uh, for the best of everyone but still uh, provide a compelling story so yes it, it did definitely play a factor court TV thank you so much uh, Ms. Offer, there were so many victims families inside the courtroom every day sitting behind you mm -hmm. how Yes. Um, the, the motivation we received from those families um, was tremendous. And we knew, again, from the point when Mr. Brooks chose to represent himself, this was going to be a marathon. We talked about that many times as a team, that um, we just need to keep moving forward every day, whatever that looked like. But what motivated us was these families that are behind me, a lot of them. Um, and we thought of those mothers and fathers sitting in hospital rooms with their children and the ongoing 
care that they're still physically healing from and certainly emotionally healing from. And that motivated us tremendously. But you couldn't meet a nicer group of people. I mean, that's the thing is I'm not surprised, having lived in Waukesha for 35 years, um, that they're good people here. And they would ask us, how are you doing? Do you guys need anything? Which was really phenomenal. They were uh, a tremendous group of people to work for, and it was our honor to represent them and be a voice for them in the court. Uh, that was strategic for the appeal, to be very blunt. Um, I wasn't throwing a lifeline to Mr. Brooks. I really had no interest in hearing what he had to say because I heard all of his lies and stories so far. So that was just trying to do what was legally required at the moment. And I frankly wasn't sure it was going to work because he was so uh, difficult with Judge Doro. But in the end, it did work. He He got to blurt out what he wanted to blurt, and then the judge struck that from the record and we were able to move on. So I was glad that that was the result, but we talked about it uh, at the prosecution table and, and came up with that idea of let's offer this, um, again, just to protect the record for the appeal. Jim. Knowing what you knew getting into this with Brooks uh, uh, representing himself, what caught you by surprise when he presented Again, his absolute disrespect and um, dishonor to the victims, the community, and the court process. I'll do Brian from the Freeman, and then two more for, we'll do CBS, and then, we'll, we'll, and then we'll, where are you from? WBR. Okay. Those are the last three, so go, Brian, you got one? Uh, yeah, there has been some discussion since the verdict was announced that uh, perhaps a decision to represent himself is grounds for appeal. Are you concerned at all about that? Well, Mr. Brooks has a right to an appeal. Every defendant does. And I fully expect him to take advantage of his rights as a convicted defendant in this case. I am very confident in the record that Judge Doro made and his decision to represent himself. Yes. Go ahead. Hi, from Los Angeles, CBS News. What do you think about the length of time that the jury took to deliberate? Short, long, be surprised? Um, we were not. Uh, we talked about it last night, and frankly, I, I know a lot of you were here too. We were all, by the time we got to that 8 o'clock mark, we were exhausted. And when they said they wanted to go home and rest, we were thankful, quite frankly, because we all felt the same way. It's, it's such an emotionally draining day. Um, and to get through all that and the nonstop banter from Mr. Brooks, it's taxing. You all witnessed it yourself. Um, so we were grateful. We thought they gave it good thought because they went out around 6.30. Their dinner was there immediately, right? So uh, jurors are human beings. They get a nice meal. They got a little time to talk, and then they decided, let's rest. Let's sleep on it. Always a good um, option uh, for decision-making for anybody, right? Um, get a good night's sleep, sleep on it, and come back the next day. And then, um, you know, they worked again for about another hour this morning, and with the uh, quality of the investigation in this case, um, we think the verdict was uh, fair. The timing was spot on. Go ahead. There's a lot of people who aren't here today, of course, but a lot of people who are also at the parade on the day of the parade who aren't here. Um, in closing, what do you want to say to them just at, at the end of this process? Well, I hope um, some of you caught the flavor of that. You cannot imagine until you saw some of those videos how horrific it would have been to stand there and watch that. Um, especially when your children and, and some of these witnesses testified to that, they couldn't find their children, right? Um, and that's not just people who were struck. That There was many, many citizens who could not find their own child for a period of time. So just uh, unbelievable. But once the car went through and everybody had that initial, the way the citizens of this community punched in. There's, there's no other word for it. The nurses, the doctors, the EMTs, the paramedics, anybody who knew anything about how to apply a Band-Aid walked into that street and treated those people. So 
um, that was another source of strength for us, right, is uh, if they could do that, we can, we can get through this. Thank you. As we move on to the next phases of this of the judicial process, I'm sure that people will be readily available to provide comment as we get into. We have a court hearing on Monday at one o'clock, I believe, for scheduling, and I think then we're going to go into the sentencing phase, and we'll know more about that. People here uh, behind me will make themselves available for you. I'm pretty much sure as this goes on. But as of right now, we're going to end it and uh, allow people to be with their families. And uh, definitely, this prosecution team needs some much-needed rest and some time uh, away from this courthouse. So thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, if we could make a line so I can allow these people up. Thank you. It was more so at your candle. Hey, Tim, can you walk them out? You guys just follow uh, Deputy Winston.